My name is Michael Janis, and right now you're in the Washington Glass School and Studio in Mount Rainier, Maryland. I came about uh, glass in a kind of roundabout way myself. Uh, originally, I was an architect. I was an architect for 20 years, both in the United States and in Australia. And one of the things that I liked doing as an artist is I liked the drawing process. I liked the whole uh, very formal, very disciplined uh, aesthetic of working on a drawing and such. And in glass, a lot of it is going to be a lot more of a, of a uh, sculptural medium where you're uh, combining elements and firing it together. And working with glass powders, I was able to start expressing more of that uh, drawing quality that I wanted to have in my artwork. And I just started focusing more and more on how to get the imagery truer and sharper and more graphic into glass, that that's really what I became, started becoming known for in the DC area, was that, that drawing technique that I work on. Uh, it's a technique that's called sgraffito, where I'm taking essentially uh, crushed glass powder and sifting it onto glass and then using different tools like uh, X-Acto blades and uh, sharp scratching points and just scratching out the pattern from the powder. This is all glass powder that's uh, sprinkled onto this sheet of uh, window glass and I fired it in to about 1200 degrees and that is enough for the black glass powder to melt into that glass but it doesn't really affect the main sheet and when I do that I can now pick up the sheet of glass and manipulate it I can put a piece of glass with another image behind it I can put another image on top of it so that when you look through the piece you're looking from one layer through to the next layer to the next layer and that depth that sense of depth is really what I like in the piece sometimes after I fire it and I have this image going back into it I will mount some elements in glass on top so I'll have an element that comes out I, I usually let, let each piece evolve and, and I will start with a concept and I will do some compositional studies to say if I'm doing this, uh, may, perhaps this piece where I'm doing a, a boy jumping and uh, you're seeing a backdrop of skyscrapers, I'm, I'm doing that, I'll do that as a, a quick sketch and then as I source out what buildings do I want in the backdrop, I might cut and make a collage of different buildings that I want to see in the backdrop. And as I work on the piece and do uh, layer upon layer of glass, I do each layer separately and that way I can say as I work on it, it's not the right composition, change this element to something else. And sometimes the artwork will move into a direction that I did not start out in being and I just let it evolve the way it wants to evolve. I can always redo a piece if I end up saying, nope, before I do my final firing, I have the ability to change the composition. I am very much a figurative artist. I, I do respond to that. Uh, that. That always had been a part of my architectural training was to understand how the scale relate to the piece and how the figures, a figure, drawing a figure into any of my architectural pieces became an important piece to understand how big is it. And then my work here in the glass school since coming here, I've been focused more on that figure and then the relationship of how it goes in, rather than the other way around of the work with the figure just for scale, the figure became the artwork piece. And so I really like working with figures and, and the, the detailed uh, qualities of how to express them, how to give the nuances, working with powders on how to change the face with just a few taps of the powder so that it shows that kind of uh, expression. There is something about the, I think it's just because it's, it's a powder quality that you really get a, a, a keep on builds in such a gradation that, that it, it, it shows a lot with shading and to me that's a thing that I like because I can so easily imply a curved shape and such and it's just a matter of putting more in one area and then if I have, uh, you know, just like in what you learned in life drawing and such, how, do you, how does a, a shade come to an edge when it goes towards a round ball? How